Vitality is always there to be discovered. Even if we're dealing with a very tough situation, parent, child, colleague, can we tap into something good? I go into programs and they say, oh, you gotta help us out. Jane's been causing such a problem and we don't know what to do. She's bringing the whole program down and I'll say, how long has Jane been here? Either seven or 17 years. It's never someone they newly hired. Like, well, she's worked for you year after year. Why, oh, she's always on time and her classroom's immaculate. But they focus on the one big problem. How do we really honor who she is and her strengths? Focus on those vitalities. Talk to her about them. Does that mean she doesn't have to change her behavior at circle time? Of course not. But the more she knows we see her for her strengths, the easier it's going to be to find the energy to fix those other areas. Ask questions. Asking questions influences those who answer. And especially that first question. Oh, how'd everything go? Did you get along okay today? That must have been the longest day you've had in a long time. Do you tend to start the next conversation about the positives? You've already taken the one-way ticket down the negative spiral. They say the number one question that we can all ask today and every day of our lives is, what's the best thing that's happened to you today? Try it. Go home, call somebody. Do people have an answer? The woman who just done a lot of research on this question said, it doesn't matter. If it's your doctor, your lawyer, your taxi cab driver, your dry cleaner, everyone has a story of vibrance. And what they're going to say to you is something you can't even predict. And I find, having raised, you know, my kids are very close in age, so we had a lot of teenage years with four teenagers at a time. Um, the more I focused on the positive, the less draining, the, oh my God, you have four teenagers. Oh, they're awesome, they're great, you know, they're doing this. If I focused on those negative, there's a few challenges here and there, it could overwhelm you. So you need to own that. How are you questioning? How are you owning that energy? And then the last one, people increase their confidence for change when they build on what they know. How are we helping people? That teacher that's really struggling with bringing the science curriculum to life, maybe she's awesome in literacy. How do we say, what ideas do you have for books around science? I noticed the kids were so excited about wind. Oh yeah, that's great, I'm gonna go to the library today. I love finding books on things like this. Is she gonna be building her science curriculum? But she's doing it on the grounds of what she knows and is comfortable with. Start with what people know. It was funny, you know, when I was raising my own kids, I used to tease my husband about this because I had a lot of background in this and then we quickly had three children in 17 months and then four children under three years. And I said, look, we have a choice every day. We're either pouring gasoline on the fire or we're stepping away from the fire. This could happen a hundred times a day. And he was really good at what? <laughs> Putting the gasoline on and I was good at stepping away. But little by little, we learned if we engage with every little skirmish, he touched my stuff and she blah, blah, forget it. We'd be in a constant turmoil. So learning to hit that pause button, learning to step away, learning to get them to the cool side of the pillow, or in some cases us, to the cool side of the pillow, right, was life lessons. We want to be able to think about that, and we want to empower ourselves through mindfulness to find ways to stop the fire. Because once it starts going, it can just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. Anything else about this powerful piece? Maybe we should delegate a bit more, not, not have the one person doing too much. Absolutely, and that's, you know, back to Irene this morning. How are we thinking about shared leadership? That when we think we have to do it all, and then we're reacting with fire and fury all the time, we're bringing people down. We think, oh, I have to do this. They need me to do this. And I'm not doing any of it in a calm, peaceful state. I think what, what she says here, when we're making decisions with distracted minds, when we're in that place of reacting, we need to say, what's going on? What's causing this energy for me? How am I supporting the organization? How am I hindering the organization? Is really, really key. And I think for some people, when they're in, they're in that fired up state, hitting the pause button is really hard for them. So to hold your ground, because are they trying really hard to draw us in? Just like that frustrated, upset three-year-old to say, I know this might seem hard for you not to have this conversation right now, but I think it'll be better for both of us if we have this tomorrow, if we just sleep on it. What happens by the next day? 
Oh, I have someone scheduled at 12. Why don't you come up and we'll have it? Oh, no, everything's good. Sorry about that. They don't even want to go there. You know, 90% <laughs> of the time, it's a very short conversation. But if we let it explode, it could have caused huge, huge problems. So that sense of mindfulness is really, really pivotal. So you'll get a new set of slides and you'll get the handouts. And we have a few handouts coming for you now that will tie into the afternoon. I'm going to pass around this notebook. I have a constant contact type email that I send out with video links, books, quotes, reflections, activities. If people are interested, you can just sign up with your email address and I'll add you to the list. And hopefully, at the end of the year, I'll be announcing my book that's going to be published along this topic. Of so you'll get a new set of slides and you'll get the handouts. And we have a few handouts coming for you now that will tie into the afternoon. I'm going to pass Guess around what? this notebook. I have a constant contact type email that I send out with video links, books, quotes, reflections, activities. If people are interested, you can just sign up with your email address and I'll add you to the list. And hopefully, at the end of the year, I'll be announcing my book that's going to be published along this topic of really facilitating passion and engagement in early childhood settings. So I'm just finish that up, but it takes a while from Creativity. now to publication. But I'll send you out the information. So I'll just start that there. That doesn't mean we're all going to go to art school. Mm. Great Any artists, questions right? or it thoughts before we jump in? in very passionate and engaged way. Did anyone answer the question the when you went to lunch? One of the words we heard this morning. Did you think oh. about when we're mindful, a child and their and passion and interest? And or you just thought about There's that lovely so lunch they were serving? <laughs> That can All right. Well, we'll ease you in slowly. Vision sheet in there. You can rewrite it. You can type it up. Make it beautiful for yourself. But you want to put a few action steps with it. This old proverb says, "A vision without a plan is just a dream." How many people have been there? You want to bring it to life. A plan without a vision is drudgery. Somebody comes to you and says, "Here's your strategic plan. Here's a way you can make things better." Does anyone get invested in that? Very low level. But a vision with a plan can change the world. And I'll give you one more bit of research on this that I love. In 1976, Harvard asked its graduating seniors if they had a vision statement in writing. Only 3% of them did. 10 years later, they checked in with them again. The 3% who wrote and had active vision statements were worth more than the 97% of the others combined. So this isn't, I'm not doing this exercise as an exercise in material wealth, but what happened to those 3% that had the vision statement? What did they do? They acted on it. They achieved their goals. They became, in whatever way their vision said, successful. If you're going to move forward and create change and bring positive energy to this work, become engaged in this work in a way that shapes your own lives as well as children's lives, keep that vision alive. Write yourself some goals. Stay focused on where you're going, not the bumps in the road, not the drudgery, and you're going to start seeing change happen in very powerful, meaningful ways to you and, and to everybody around you. So on that note, I'm going to close and turn it back to who's ever wrapping us up.